titty parties. Um, those are those are parties, and I was one of the kids that was one of the party favors. And a party favors means that you're set on top of a table, and you're used as a toy for anybody who comes across the table or who wants to party at a certain time of night when the music stops and then the DJ starts flashing all these lights and they close the doors and then everybody turns into like a frenzy and starts going into a crazed animal-like demonic state and you have no idea what's going on and yes there was a time where I was just like completely don't give a shit because it happened and I was the type of kid that thought that you know you're in the presence of royalty and they make it seem like you're in the presence of Hollywood so you should be you should be honored and you should be appreciating that you're there and I was that person I totally acted like that I was like oh it's fine you know it really doesn't matter but then it really did matter when um, my pimp was like he had rules he had lots of rules and it was more money no this is the story, the first story that we heard of a real Diddy survivor coming out and speaking about it. We reacted to the entire video. She spoke about this on multiple occasions on Instagram Live, and we reacted to those videos. But in today's video, we have an interview with another woman who said that she spent a night at one of P. Diddy's parties. Now, at this point, I'm starting to believe a lot of the people who are coming out because it also seems like there are a lot of people to co-sign what they're saying. The lady that was just speaking, her name is Allie Carter, and she had her mother in the car. She had evidence that she was once a victim of trafficking. Like, there were things that aligned in her story. Now, in today's video, we have, shout out to uh, Soft White Underbelly for having this interview. But we have this other girl, My Night at P. Diddy's Freak Off, yeah? Very, very curious to see what her experience was like especially after hearing the gruesome details of that last video. Now, if you guys are interested in watching that video, I'll leave a link down below in the uh, the comments or something like that. But let's continue into this video right here. December of 22. Oh, yeah, about to be 22. December of 22, you were here. Mm -hmm. You did our first interview. You were just some girl that I met through a friend. Right. And you were doing this interview, and you mentioned something about... I accidentally mentioned it, too. Like, it slipped out. About P. Diddy? About P. Diddy. You went to one of his parties? Yeah. Crazy party. And, uh... He's in the news now because of all the scandal. And they didn't believe me. But when it started, like, when it started coming out, people were, like, mentioning me, like, you were telling the truth about it. And I'm like, duh, I'm not going to lie about something like that. And I, ki I kind of, like, tried to briefly talk about it because I knew it wasn't going to seem true because it was just too much. It was too, too crazy. Many. It was too crazy. People were going to think that I was just lying. It had, like, Bro. a lot of people involved, celebrities and stuff. So I was trying to be real vague about it. But that party traumatized me. How did you get invited to it? By being with a prince um, that I met in L.A. He lived in Glendale. California and um, you know long story short I got out of this crazy little contract and I was looking for somebody to invest in me and I knew somebody who knew somebody that was like I want to introduce you to a prince he know a lot of celebrities that are our producers and stuff so I never put two and two together that this prince knew P Diddy as when you the say a producer. prince prince of what um, he was from he was a Arabian prince. Really? Yes. Wow. And he really was a prince for real. Right, I'm Arabian prince. Money. I'm talking about a lot of money. But money. I wasn't worried about him being a prince. I was worried about who he actually knew. So when he invited me to, um, he met me. He said, I want to invite you tomorrow to um, Music Ultra Week, whatever. And it's like an event, uh, Ultra Music Week. It's like an event for like two weeks where people party, 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 including P. Diddy. And they party at Club Live. Um, they party at like just in South Beach, Star Island, like where P. Diddy stays or throw his freak offs at. And I never knew that we were gonna go there because I was there for two weeks 
And I knew it was something fishy. He kept saying, I got a surprise for you. I got a surprise for you. I'm like, but I'm only supposed to stay for two weeks, and I'm here longer than three, I mean, than two weeks. And it was almost a month. It was basically a month by then. And he was like, no, because I just want you to meet one special person. So he ended up telling me, like, when we went to Club Live, he was like, guess where we're going tonight? I'm like, where? He's like, to P. Diddy's house. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, that's crazy because... I hear a lot about P. Diddy, and I'm like, his house for what? Like, to go sing? He's like, no, he's throwing this wild party. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, okay. So we went from Club Live. It ended at, like, the clubs end at, like, three or four, and not two, like how out here is. So we waited around the mansion, the Prince's Mansion, for about an hour. And then as soon as 6.30 hit, we went. We all got in the car, like a big Uber, and... um me and all the other girls. Now, mind you, I'm the only black girl. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm about to meet Pete Diddy. Oh, you know, she like, I'm probably going to have to sing for him. Da, da, da. And she I just tried evidence, to, like, yeah. keep my composure. So we get there, and that's when stuff got weird. <laughs> and that's why they lock up our phones, because they know what we see in there. You know, it's he, he can get in trouble, like, right now. So... Basically, so we arrived, security guard patted us down, they put our phone in this little bubble case. So the bubble case is closed. They can't get unlocked until we walk out. So as we're in there, the only way of us taking any type of pictures is if we get in the photo booth. He has like a teen love photo booth or whatever. Take like four pictures, so I, you know, got pictures. I still got everything in my snap too, like of the photos, everything. That's all you could get. So I'm walking around or whatever, so. One of his sons, I'm not going to tell you which one, but it was like recruiting like whoever they wanted to go inside the house because the back, the the freak off is inside the house and in the backyard. So you have the pool and they're playing loud house music like Mark. The house music, it makes you feel kind of woozy, first of all, because it's like a rave or something. Dun, 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 and it's real loud. So you can't really see nothing, but you're seeing everybody like walking around, drunk, hopping around. It's still 7 a.m. So the sun is like coming up. And <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on. A, it's 7 a.m.? That's crazy. People are walking around. Period. Let's get into it. They're walking around naked already. And they're in the pool, skinny dipping. And they're drinking mimosas in the pool, but then it's like a waitress walking around giving people drinks, just passing people drinks, you know? And people are just taking them. Me, I don't drink like that, but I'll, I'm like an occasional drinker. Like I'll drink if we're partying or whatever, just for that occasion. So, cause people are gonna keep saying, drink, drink, drink. But I didn't take a sip a drink of a drink yet. But I just had it in my hand. So one of the sons seen me walking. Mind you, I'm with other girls, but we split up. So I was walking with one girl. She's a Puerto Rican girl. So P. Diddy's son was like, you. And I'm like, me or her? And then he was like, no, you. Come here. So I went to him, and he gave me some shoes. So these shoes was like some um, terry cloth, like robe shoes, white shoes. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? He was like, go in the house with these. He was like, everybody who gets these shoes, you get to go in the house. But I'm thinking you could just go in the house if you want to, but everybody can't go in the house. They're literally selectively picking who they want. So I'm like, well, what about my friend? He was like, no, only you. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm holding the shoes. I'm walking around. You know, I'm a good loyal friend. I'm not going to go inside a house where they said my friend can't go. So we just walking around mingling. But we tripping out, looking at everybody, like they off everything smoking and jumping around like hooligans. And so I seen P. Diddy or whatever, and I seen him with the prince. I'm not gonna say what he was doing, but something really, I get real nervous. <laughs> something real crazy, cause I don't like to really expose people. I could talk about me, but when it's about, like me, my family, cause it's us. But when it's other people, bro, doing something real sexual, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, the booty tickling bandit was active. Your boy P. Diddy is known for being a booty tickling bandit and drilling me mill. Audio is bonkers. Let's continue. Now he got the prince in his warm embrace. So that we could see and so that we can get turned on, okay? So he's doing something with himself. And I'm like, <laughs> 
girl, do you see him? She's like, yes, but mind you, we're screaming like, girl, do you see him? Oh, my God, because of the music. And I'm just like, whatever. Then he starts to act like really obnoxious, like, I'm the king of the world, jumping around, doing all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's regular P. Diddy shit. But what got me was how he walked up to me and was like, why are you not in the house? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, how are you enjoying my house? So we had a little talk or whatever. He started talking about all these things. Oh, yeah, you're the one that, you know, I seen was telling me about the prince. He's like, um, oh, yeah, um, it's very nice to meet you. Like, your life is not going to be the same. Da, 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 da. They, we started talking about going to Cuba. Are you going to Cuba with us? I'm like, what? And that's the thing. I didn't really know about this. So this is when I start asking around or whatever. I said that in the last interview. But to get to the point, I ended up going in the house because he was on me, like, going to that house. I'm like, okay. And then the person that he was dating at that time, we're not going to say her name, but we all know, she came and was, like, looking at him like, what are you doing? Because he was talking to me for too long. So she came to, like, rub on his shoulders or whatever, and he just pushed her. And I'm looking, like, real uncomfortable, like, oh, I know what this is about. I don't want to be in the middle of there or whatever. So that's what made me go into the house because I'm like, okay, let me just go in the house. So I tell my friend, like, wait right here, girl. Let me just put on these shoes, see what this house is about. Walk up in there. <laughs> I don't judge people. Baby oil. Because Baby at the time oil. I was just smoking weed. <laughs> but you know when people are out of their mind and you know when people – you know what you don't want to be a part of. And it's just like, I'm seeing stuff that you see on the movies. I'm, this corner, this got going on. This corner, they over here doing this. This corner, they over there having sex. This corner, I'm just going to say, because I don't know what I can say, because I'm not trying to be incriminating myself, but they were dressed up like little Harold Juku Barbies. Like what? Little people, okay? We're not going to say what type of little people, but like a fetish. And I'm looking like, what are they doing here? Hello, like, dressed Google up, little um, red lipstick. Like, they weren't supposed to be there. But I'm just looking like, maybe it's some type of production going on. But why would they be at this party at 7 o'clock in the morning with grown people? Like, why why would they be here? So I was just like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> But then when I'm looking in this corner, this corner, this person laid out. And I'm looking like, what's going on? Then I'm seeing, like, Instagram models or whatever. I'm like, oh, hey. So I'm kind of getting distracted, feeling, like, kind of comfortable. Like, she's here. Oh, my gosh, she's here. And then I see P. Diddy, you know, walking through the house, like, with his eyes on me. Like, you know, like... Is this, you know, you see, like, are are you agreeing with this? Is this is, and I don't. Now, mind you, I still got my friend out there. So I walked out of the house and I'm telling her, like, oh, my God, bitch. Like, this nigga is, this is, oh, my God, you should, she, like, for real. But I'm just, like, I'm not even tripping. Like, oh, well, like, this nigga's weird. Like, you know, so I'm really looking at the situation, like, I don't even want to be involved in this type of stuff. Because once I see something, I can't get it out of my mind. And I'm like a hypochondriac, like I keep on having flashbacks about it. So whatever. So, of course, I come out, and then here he goes again. And another rapper, well-known rapper, comes and starts feeling on me like, hey, you. So now it just seems like everybody is faded at this point. They're either drunk or on all the drugs, obviously, with this house music. So now I just feel like trapped in. Like, I don't like it. And I know the devil when I see it. Because by me being so spiritual and tapped in, I know when something is not right, I'm not judging, but I just don't want to be a part of it because how am I going to get out of this shit? Like, I'm already here, and then I heard conversations or whatever, and then P. Diddy was like, that's the one that I want. That's I want her. So now I feel like, you know, they plotting on me. Like, did you bring me here on purpose? Like, is this the, you know, producer you was talking about? And I came here specifically with the Prince to rub elbows with people, to network for um the music week but then i put two and two together like the prince have been saying your life is never gonna be the same you're gonna be happy somebody's expecting you and i just feel like that was the time that i was gonna get sick or, or something like that and then they kept trying to make me like I've been around celebrities before. If a rapper wants you or somebody wants you, they're not going to do it. They're going to send somebody else to do it. So if a waitress is coming or another girl or a pretty girl or a guy, they'll sick somebody on you. Like, take this drink, do this, do that. And then you just feel eyes on you, like watching to see if you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. So 
I already know what time it was. And it's crazy because I had to leave that place. In my last interview, I told you I had to escape. I had to leave from the prince because he was telling me we was leaving for Cuba the next day. Cuba with who? With V. Diddy or what? Like, this is all crazy. So to see all of this stuff come out, and I escaped by leaving. I had to call the police and everything. I had to leave with the prince. That's another story. From the prince, from that house, I didn't leave with the other girls. I had to get my phone unlocked, of course, but like I had to like catch a, Uber, a taxi, not even an Uber, a taxi, to another location, and then I ended up going to the airport, and I ended up leaving because I just felt bamboozled. First, I'm getting lied to about how long I'm supposed to stay there. Then you keep talking about I'm supposed to meet this producer, but we're not talking about nothing with music, but you're talking about going to Cuba. We didn't even do what we were supposed to do in Miami, or did we do what we were supposed to do in Miami at this freak-off? But because I'm not, cooperating with what I see and I feel like like that's what the Illuminati and stuff is about like a secret society like they want to see what you allow what you cool with and then next thing you know boom take that drink your drink take that you're out of it take that pill because everybody was off something but you had to be being in that environment many, like that how many people were at this event uh like hundreds even when it was a certain amount outside, but in the house was really crowded. You know what I'm saying? And you would think that, like, it was, yeah, it was more people in the house. And you walked around? Yeah, I walked around for about five minutes. I seen what I needed to see. <laughs> and I was like, no, ma'am. No, sir. Somebody said no, ma'am. Because it was like selling your soul at that house. And if you like that, it's nothing to you. But if you're not like that, you're going to feel uncomfortable. And then it's like, at first I used to think P. Diddy was like, so he like rep he always talk about team love and all of this stuff. Yeah, like he's all about, love. no, he all about himself. Yeah, love. And I know sex because <laughs> I've dealt, you know, I've dealt with yeah. men, Mark. So I know when somebody is trying to lead you on to stuff and sitting back acting like he just this macho man. And he is a charmer, though. That's one thing. Like, he will charm the fuck out of you. But for me, that's so game tight. I'm like, I know what this is. And I'm ready to get to the music. Like, if that's the case, you should have been like, don't tell me you about to change my life and da da da, -da. And, Oh, have you been writing? Oh, that's nothing, too. He was like, have you been writing the songs that um, I've seen been telling you to write? Because the prince wanted me to write out all the songs I ever made in my life. I said, without the beat? He's like, yeah, just start writing songs. So you never know. They'll take my music, drug me. Fuck me, do whatever, and just throw me away, basically. Or after you have something on me, when we do do the music, you have that on me that this happened, and now I'm blackmailed or some shit like that. So <sighs> touching all on me at that party, even the rapper who touched all on me, like that rapper was cool. Like I was liking that rapper, but when they were like, "Hey, you and doing all that." What can I do? All I could do is just say, like, move his hand, like, oh, I'm fine, but, you know, trying to, like, still be cool. But I'm like, why do everybody feel comfortable to just touch on you? Even P. Diddy, like, why do you, why I look up and you're right there? And then, like, in my face, like, are you, like, in my house? Like, look, like it's weird. Like, looking at him is like when you're a kid and you're getting in trouble by your parent and you can't look them in their face. And it's like, a demon. I'm telling you, like this dark spirit, like he possessing you as he's looking at you. That power, that control. So I'm like, I read the art of seduction, motherfucker. I know what you're doing, and you're trying to really seduce me right now. And oh, take a drink. Oh no, oh, do this, do that. Go in there. Like it's just not nothing. And I want to know why me go in the house and why not the girl. So now you're picking and choosing. So it's fishy to me. So when all this stuff start coming out, I was like. I knew I was right. I knew it. Like, it ain't no doubt about that P. Diddy was doing all that. And like I say, I don't tr judge because I've been around people doing cocaine. And, but these hard drugs that they was doing and just, I ain't going to lie, it was orgies and stuff going on. So all of this stuff going on, I'm like, why is people doing stuff all in the open? Like, that's just offending me and assaulting me, period, because like where am I at? Like, in Miami, bro. All types of drugs is normal, bro. He would do drugs daily before they go to work. It's like coffee. You know what I'm saying? But 
it's the all the other stuff that is weird. It's the it's the environment that's weird. The atmosphere that's weird. The coercion into it. That's weird. You know what I mean? But the, the all the other stuff, that's that's normal. I didn't sign up for this. And how can I really get out? So I had to like ease my way on out. You know, it's security, but they not caring about what happens as long as that phone is closed. Mm. They damn they they damn near don't care if somebody died up in there. Ain't nobody can film it. And Ain't they were they were famous it. people or not? It was a whole bunch of famous people. Yeah, like four famous people and then some um, Instagram models. Mm -hmm. And the whole time he just was like trying to undress me with his eyes, and I was thinking like I'm this is really no cap because at that time. You know, I've always been skinny. So at that time, the son who came up to me, I was like, boy, do, is it because I resemble your mom? Like, you know, like Kim Porter, like stuff like that, like you just never know. Like, I feel like, you know, P. Diddy does have a type. I feel like everybody that was in that house, it was a certain type of person. It was a certain type of something that he wanted and what he liked. And you could just tell, like, he get whatever he wants. That's why he has no problem touching on you, being all in your face, popping up on you, being obnoxious, and just hounding you until you do what he say. And that's just how the industry is already, especially him, because he got a lot of money, you know? Because you're, you're a singer as well, right? Yeah, so they probably like, do you want this opportunity or what? And I'm like, not that damn bad, but I do want it. I do. But if I already got a bad vibe and I'm seeing stuff that you're into, I already know how this is gonna be. So I don't wanna like, you know, ignore some red flags and then I'll be in trouble because of you. Like literally in trouble. Like we know his past, like Shine, the rapper, you know, being in jail because of him. Like don't think just because I'm from where I'm from, you could just do anything. And that's the, that's why I never really said nothing about it because I just felt like, who am I? You know, he got money, like ain't nobody gonna believe me. But I have all the receipts. I have it all in my snap to this day. It never went nowhere. That was just my experience just being in Miami for the first time. I didn't know that I was going to end up at P. Diddy's house. Did you take photos outside the house? When I got my phone back, yeah. Videos or something? Mm -hmm. I took videos um, when I was going to the house before I knew this was some weird shit. And then when I got my phone, I ended up yeah, recording. And then I had the shoes on. <laughs> oh, you had the shoes? Mm. I left with the shoes on because I don't know where I put my shoes at when I put those on. And I was, and it was a lot going on. Um, it was real loud. So. Damn, you left your own know. shoes, baby. It, I, it just tripped me out. And I was like, is he gay? You know, like, and, and nothing against gays. I just, I couldn't put my finger. I was like, what is this dude into? But his house, his freak off. No. Not like that. You know I'm going to make everything into a joke, but this is a real serious situation because it'll traumatize you because now I ain't trusting no producer. I look at everybody like if I went to the top of the top and I've been looking at him like this top-notch mogul and like whatever. But, child, it's a lot. But it's some stuff, you know, that I did leave out because I don't, I don't want to say too much, but... Um, you might as well say you told everything else. Because I told you it was some celebrities in there. But for these girls that did get drugged and did take these drinks, I feel like it's because everybody was all having fun. You know, you wouldn't think that somebody would do something like that to you until you get to seeing everything. And once you're intoxicated, it's too late. It's just too late. So that's why you got to watch... Um, what drinks you take, and they was just pushing them on us too much. Take a drink, take a drink, take a drink. And I'm like, no. Because I was already, you know, <laughs> sipping a little bit at Club Live. So I wanted to, like, mind you, I'm thinking, like, he going to ask me to sing in a minute. I don't want to be toe up, you know, mm -hmm. until I put two and two together. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I did. I'm glad you got out and survived? Yep. I'm always surviving. This is no joke. You're like, a survivor. For real. And it's like... I'm still going through stuff, you know, you, you don't survive being traumatized. And these things do, do traumatize you because it's like, dang, I can't never get around this. Like, it always end up to this, sex, or some creep shit, or somebody taking advantage of you or something, or feeling all on you and you can't do nothing because... You thought the streets were dangerous? Yeah. <laughs> 
That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you. But, um, yeah. So I, I just want to see, like, you know, what's going to happen because I know a lot of people was... He went to trial today. Hmm. And I don't even know. It's going to be in the news for a while, I think. It's going to be in the news, and a lot of stuff is going to come out. So don't be saying I'm lying, because I wasn't lying. This is all alleged, but right. sounds it's, yeah. sounds like it's pretty consistent with things that are in the news. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you did say this, what, like two years ago? Exactly. And I told you I got sex trafficking vibes from it. Remember? I was like, he was trying to sell us. The Prince to Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Which one do you want? Which one? I want that one. Huh? What does it, it feel like to be peddled off like that to somebody powerful? Is it, is it, is it, it's scary. It's scary because what could happen, but it's like, come on, you know, I'm honored to be <laughs> chosen. Chosen, period. But I don't want to be. I don't want to end up in a ditch somewhere, you know, just no, because he he's choosing so no, many people crazy. and assaulting people. I don't want to be assaulted, and I don't want to be felt up. If you're going to fill me up, make sure you ask me. Can I touch you? You know, <laughs> you're beautiful. You, not just you in my house so I can. And I'm like, this is weird, <laughs> you know? Like, tell me first, fool, because I would have charged you. No, I'm saying. But, and I just make... You know, it, it did hurt my feelings. So, you know, whatever. I, I got over it. And I didn't do music no more after that because I was like, I'm cool on music, bro. That would scare you out of the industry. Yeah, like, I'm like, this is what they, this is all they want. I just, let me just make an album and sing and write. You're a producer, ain't you? I know you're a freak bro. and a creep. Yeah, ask permission first because, you know, no means no. Mm. <laughs> Well, it's nice to see you again. You too. Bro, you look this, more is, this is the second story time. The first story time they were heard with Ali Carter. When I tell you that this story time right here, y'all, this story time is crazy. I, like, the details of this. I don't even want that this, this word to be on the screen. But the details of that video, crazy, bro. Honestly, not surprised. But to hear it coming from somebody and that being their experience as well. But I'm going to end this video here. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe. And we'll catch you on next one, man. Peace.